My name is Lucy. What type of homes did Native Americans live in during colonial times? Hi, I'm Philip Wynn here at Wampanoag Indigenous Program at Plymouth Plantation. I'm a Mashpee Wampanoag from Cape Cod. And what were our houses and our we to wash, our we to built out of? Mostly out of what the land could give us. So some areas you would see most every family having two seasonal but permanent households. One household which would be on the coastal area, no more than a mile off of a body of water, whether that be something as small as a herring run stream or the Atlantic Ocean itself. And sometimes that land would offer some cattail reeds, which is an aquatic reed which would work really good in the heat and in the rain, but not like this bark. It wouldn't uphold the weight of any snow, so it would be a purely seasonal home used about two-thirds out of the year from the spring to the fall. As long as you saw families planting their vegetables in their gardens next to the body of water where the land was more fertile, and the meat that you would be eating from that time of the year would be of that water, you know, that waterfowl, those duck and the geese and the fish and the shellfish. And then come winter time, you'd be moving into mostly all bark-covered houses which our people, the Wampanoag people, would move at the most one mile to five miles inland into a wooded valley area. And that would be a very tight-knit, close community because no gardens would be separating any families. So sometimes our houses would get up to 40 feet wide and up to 120 to 300 feet long, big enough for an entire clan or an entire family line. And those houses sometimes could stay as hot as you wanted them to be sometimes up to 75 or 80 degrees if you want it to be in the middle of winter, just by the shape of the home being dome-shaped and round and having the heat follow the surface of its container, having no still stagnant corners for the heat to stay and rest and fill. The heat was always circulating around inside of a home. And most of the living was pretty relaxed and laid back in the wintertime because no gardens to look after. The men would just go out and get red meat you know, mostly a deer, just uh, as they needed it. Sometimes bringing back that, that deer to that big household was perfect rations, splitting up about 100 pounds of meat within a family, within a household of about 60 or 90 people was uh, good enough to divvy that pounds up and do it again every other day and eat fresh meat and stay nice and warm.